I'm Daphne Richards, and this is Augie. Our question this week comes from our Facebook page. Why do cucumber and squash flowers fall off the plant before fruit's produced? I love this question since it involves so much of the easy science behind the life cycles of flowering plants. Some plants have very little trouble with pollination, while others struggle. Plants in the cucurbitaceae, the squash family, have a challenging time with pollination, especially with our native bee population in decline. As you know, squash, cucumbers, and other peepos, as they're often called by vegetable gardeners, have a long, full fruit with lots of seeds. Well, in order for that fruit to develop at all, and then to expand and elongate, pollination must occur. If there's no pollination, the plant has no reason to make a fruit. A fruit without offspring would be a serious waste of resources, and cucurbits simply don't waste their time. If a little bit of pollination occurs, then a few seeds will develop and the fruit will expand, but it will be very small. It's all part of nature and the conservation of precious natural resources for survival. Unfortunately, lack of pollination in squash and cucumbers is very common, but the good news is the problem is easily solved. You can pollinate the flowers yourself. Many gardeners tell me that they simply use their forefinger to grab a little pollen from one flower and use it to pollinate the next. Fancier folks might use a paintbrush to do the same job, especially if they're doing controlled cross-hybridization between species and want to ensure against contamination. You can also simply remove one flower and use it to pollinate the others. Plants in the squash family have two types of flowers, male and female. The female flowers produce the fruit, which you can see is a tiny swollen area behind the tubular flower. Male flowers contain the pollen, so be sure to remove a male flower to use as your pollen source. Then simply press the pollen down into the center of the female flower, onto the stigma, which is the elongated part of the flower, in the center. Make sure that you get plenty of pollen on that stigma. All of the seeds in the flower need to be pollinated or the fruit will be small and underdeveloped. Our plant this week is Duranta, also known as Brazilian Skyflower. This rapidly growing shrub can get 10 to 15 feet tall and over 5 feet wide. It's listed as hardy to only zone 9, so here in central Texas, it dies to the ground in winter in most gardens. But in our demonstration garden at the Extension Office, Duranta is evergreen, hardly even skipping a bit in the coldest of winters. We have it planted against a wall with full sun exposure all day, so the heat that builds up during the day is radiated during the night, keeping the microclimate much warmer there than in other areas of our garden. If Duranta dies to the ground in winter in your garden, simply prune it back to about three inches from the ground and it will re-emerge from the roots in spring. There are several cultivars of Duranta, but my favorite is the purple flowering one. It flowers from early spring all the way through fall and doesn't bat an eyelash at the heat or lack of rainfall. We also have a white flowering cultivar in our garden, and it's also very pretty and forms very pretty yellow ball-like fruits, more so than any of the other cultivars. If you want to attract native birds to your landscape, they'll love the fruit of the white flowering cultivar. Duranta will perform best in full sun, but it can also take light shade and, and flower quite prolifically. To do in your garden this week, it's time to deadhead all of those spent blooms on your flowering plants to encourage a second flush of color for the summer. If you have blackberries and have harvested all of the fruit, tip prune the canes back to about four feet to promote branches, branching and thus a heavier fruit crop next season. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit us at klru.org ctg with your questions, plants of the week from your garden.